we now return for the epic conclusion of a man hit in the crotch with a wrecking ball. Oh, you're awake, finally! You're, you're awake? Finally, you're awake! You've been in a coma for weeks! What? Yeah, I know, crazy! Don't worry, though. We saved your penis. Oh! We I'm... saved it in a bag? Yeah, we saved your penis. Why, why is it in on me? I'm just kidding, it's just a water gun. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't save your penis. Oh. No! <laughs> <laughs> Citizens of Lima, sorry to interrupt your broadcast of cheap crotch humor. We have taken over your broadcast. Don't try to change the channel. You'll only cause harm to you and everyone you love. <coughs> well, anyways, now that that's out of the way, welcome to Beans on Parade, the telethon. Live from the lab down here in Lima, Ohio, or as I like to call it, the laboratory. We're gonna have sketches, music, an all-around good time, there'll be some celebrity appearances, and a little bit of light-hearted robbery. So let's start the show! Welcome to our first segment. We are here to raise awareness for the Southside Spartans Boxing Gym. Let's check in with some of the celebrities out at the phone bank. R2-D2, how's it going? Oh, that's amazing. Are you kidding me? All the way from Texas. People are calling in from all over the country. Well, I mean, let's take it easy. Not everyone from Texas is like that. Hey, my brother lives in Texas. You don't talk about people from Texas like that. Okay, well, I get it. You've had a personal experience, and I don't discount that. You know, I understand. I'm not invalidating anything. You're generalizing an entire state. One of the largest states in the country. Okay, look, I don't care much for your tone right now, and you don't talk to me like that. I'm the host of this program. Here. I will throw you off of the phone bank. Do you want to keep... Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. Moving on. How about that? Arthur, why don't you just 
Keep buying Man in Those Phones and generating awareness for the Southside Spartans Boxing Gym. Boop, boop. Uh, we need to check in. We've actually got another fundraising component for the show. Kyle Honhorst, one of the founders of Beans on Parade and a Lima native, he's going to be doing an underwater stunt. And I don't need to tell you, no one holds their breath like Honey. He's been an overweight chili enthusiast since middle school. And he's never had a large vehicle or windows that open. Let's check in on old Honey. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kyle Hornhorst, and I'm going to hold my breath underwater for babies with cancer. Okay, man. Uh, and we talked about this. It's not for babies with cancer. We're doing oh. this for the Southside Spartans Boxing uh, Gym. Well, uh, in uh, that case, uh, yeah, I'm out. I'm out. Out? What? Oh, come on, man. It's for the kids. Uh, yeah, but I only uh, like babies. I don't really like kids. What's the difference, man? Just hold your breath. I'm not going to do it that long. I'll still do it, but uh, I'm not going to hold my breath that long. Okay. Well, I mean, what's what's not that long? Yeah. What's the longest you've ever held your breath? Ugh. I don't know. Maybe 13 hours. 13 hours? What do you do for 13 hours underwater? Well, I, mean, I, I just go about my day down there. I just I do stuff. I sweep, you know, rub one out. Uh Maybe fry a fish. I mean, I do all kinds of shit, you know. But today I'm going to do it for, uh, I guess I'll do it for the Southside Spartans Boxing Gym. All right, man. Well, we appreciate that. But I'm not real happy about it, and it probably won't go 13 hours. All right, let's, let's get going. Huh? All right, let's hit it. Hey, Kyle. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> We're here at the Southside Spartans Boxing Gym Live! I'm Buck Newman and this is my co-host, Dan Fraley. Dan, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. I'm really looking forward to seeing some very interesting bare knuckle boxing. Bare knuckle boxing. Mad Dog DeVilbis returns to the ring tonight. Oh, that's going to be very interesting. Let's see what we have to deal with. He had to break the engine, so. Well, that's that's just testosterone, that's all that is. Unbridled testosterone. That's right. You couldn't have said it any better, my friend. True. Mm. Looks like he's warming up a little bit before the fight. Questionable to, to do that. I'm pretty not known for his tactfulness. Not so much. No, he's, he's known for being a very uh, ball shotty type. I'm not sure if I'm using the term correctly, but very low blowishness. Little, very low. I would, I would argue. I'm not a boxing expert, but I'm pretty sure that's legal in every organization. Yeah, you definitely cannot do that. He's just now hitting random things in the gym. He has to get it out in a safe way. That's true. We all do. Mm-hmm. Dan, in all your years, have you ever seen somebody as openly insane as Mad Dog DeVillis? Oh, yes. Yeah. Very, very dangerous. I'm, I'm actually concerned for my own safety. Is that a ballerina trophy? What, what is Mad it? Dog DeVillis was actually in prison for murdering. That makes total sense. Of course he would turn around and go into boxing. That makes sense. Ah! You know, fun fact, went into prison with the nickname Mad Dog. Mighty? Having a little trouble with the weights on the ground. Mm, yeah, that's. I have concern because I think he. I don't think he'd be afraid of going back to prison. It almost seems like he wants to go back. He to might. Prison. I think maybe it's what he's used to. This is just the means to get there. I don't know. Okay, what did that ladder do to him? I mean, I'm all for this, but what did the ladder do? I think oh, many of these things need to really be fixed before he actually gets in there with a live person. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Um, I don't know a scenario where he would be facing five separate opponents, but if that were to happen, he would be prepared. Perhaps a prison brawl. That is true. Mm. 
I'm beginning to think that we're m maybe recording the, the precursor to a crime instead of a boxing match. I am not comfortable with it being here in the building with yeah. us. Well, you're far away from us, and I like that, but I... I just... <laughs> I'm beginning to think maybe he belongs in prison. Okay, stepping into the ring. Okay, interesting way to do it. I don't think boxers really bounce off the ropes much, but he seems to be getting the hang of it. Flailing his arms yes, on this lap. That's, I don't know his mindset, and quite frankly, I'm scared to death to even try. He comes closer, I'm out of here. Well, that's fair. Oh yeah, that's fair. You gotta take care of the old number one, Dan. <laughs> that's right, always do. Seems to be coming this way. Oh, that's concerning. What have we done? I mean, this attempt at a comedy sketch has been a horrible, horrible mistake. Now, assuming that he does not immediately come to our table and kill us, and this is later turned over to evidence in his murder trial, his second murder trial, and oh crap, he's coming. He's going right at us! Hello, thanks for calling Beans on Parade Telethon. This is Deadpool. How much can we put you down for? Um, I, this is... Deadpool? Yes, sir. This is Deadpool. How are you today? I mean, I'm good. I thought... I Jimmy thought Chonga and Tacos, baby. I wanted to talk to, like, the Deadpool, like, the guy... You got him. He's right here. Uh, yeah, I just... Merc with the mouth. Your mouth sounds different. Um, like, not at all like in the movies. Uh... Well, yes, sir. That was my stage voice. I used my stage voice in the movies. This is my real voice. Oh, that's too bad. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll do the voice if you want me to do the voice. I kind of do, but I kind of don't even want to contribute to the cause No, just, just, just let it's me do just, the voice. Just, the I'll do the voice, and then we'll see. The moment's go past. From there. I, I think I'll just... I'll, Listen, I'll I need to hit my quota. Else. I'll do the voice. I'll, I'll do the voice. All right? I'll throw just some get, money to some cats or just something. Give me, just, just give me a count in or something. You know, I, I got to get in the scene here. All right, so... Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's set up the scene here. Are you uh, an orphan boy looking for a hero? I'm Are Juggernaut, you, um, and I'm, I'm going gonna, oh. gonna to rip you in half. Okay. And here okay. I come, like, all you're right. dead. And then you say what? Well, well all right, okay, so I, you're Juggernaut. Okay, count Coming me in. Coming at you, I'm like, ah. Count me in. Count me in. All right, give, give me like a three count. One, two, three. Uh, thanks for calling Beans on Parade Telephone. How, how much can I get you down for? This is... Captain of Deadpool. That this is not Deadpool. Deadpool. That's not what he would say if he's getting charged I feel by like, Juggernaut. He's I feel like fighting. Deadpool would be something very witty, and it would it would cause a confusion because you'd be like, wait a minute, I'm fighting. Now you're asking me for money. And in that moment of confusion, I would then strike with my katana because I'm Deadpool. I still feel like you're not Deadpool. Sir, how much can we put you down for $15. Alright, thanks. Donation received. $15. Skitcherly ditcherly do. It's skitch number two. Ha <laughs> ha. Roll it. I've been busy. What was the thing? I got a call. May I help you? Yeah, I'm here to see the big guy. He's expecting me. Okay, um, one second. Uh, your three o'clock is here? I know, I know. Send him on in. Perfect. Go on in. Here we go. God, big fan. Forgot to say, I'm a big fan of existence. That said, I'm here for business, and God, you are my business. Proceed. Like I said, I'm a fan. I read Genesis. I was a fan from day one. But you have to admit, the Old Testament was a little harsh. There was a lot of violence back in the OT. The floods, the locusts, the frogs, killing the firstborn of the Egyptian pharaohs. Well, that certainly got the pharaoh's attention. No argument here. Hey, I get it. But understand, not everyone's going to see it the way we see it. Some people see old God as an angry, vengeful deity just waiting to cause some damage. And I think we can all agree we should skip the global flood next time. 
What do you suggest? Change is scary. Hey, I understand. But that's why you need to do it. That's why I present to you the Son of God, Terry. Terry is the Son of God. He's cool. He wears sandals. He walks everywhere. He has connections, but he doesn't use them. He hangs out with fishermen. He's literally an everyman. He even hangs out with whores. Wow. He raises the dead. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of guy who would follow somebody who brought me back to life. He can turn water into wine. Yeah, it's always a party with Terry. Won't this uh, new image alienate our valued customers? I mean, uh, people expect a certain thing from me. Here's the thing. The older crowd will stick around because they love the old God. The new crowd will come around because they love Terry so much. And that alone will double our market share. So what is the message of Terry? He's your son. Think of him as a cooler, younger you. It's the same moral, same tone. He'll even tell people to read the Old Testament just for the heck of it. Now understand, he's cool, he's hip, but he's just you. He's god light. Not too light, mind you. He's still God. Same God, new great taste. That is going to sell a lot of Bibles. And we are planning on rolling out our New Testament uh, next year. Do like that water into wine idea. And it is always good to kick off a new campaign with a party. But you know, I, uh, I do already have a son. His name's Jesus. Now, hold on. I really think the Terry campaign's the better option here, pal. Uh, you know, I do think that our message is pretty understandable. Okay. How about we put a pin in it? We'll circle back around when time permits. Okay, well, first, let's uh, talk a little bit more about my heart's desire. I hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta take this. Satan, my man. But I'm sorry I had to take this. How would you like to be president? Well, uh, you know where to find us. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, no, it's nothing important. No, it's fine, fine. Hey guys, former WWE superstar Al Snow here, and I am also a former citizen of Lima, Ohio. Born and raised, and uh, I think I think right now, potentially, I might be the most famous resident, uh, former resident of Lima, Ohio there is. I think I, simply because I outlived uh, Phil Stiller and Hugh Downs, who were from Lima, Ohio. Uh, little known fact, guys, little known fact. Hey. I am very proud of you. I hear you're doing a fundraiser for Art Space and Southside Boxing in Lima, Ohio. Thank you very much. That's an awesome, awesome thing to do. But I got to ask you guys, where's your judgment? What are you thinking? You got the dead dogs as your house band? The dead dogs? I mean, what are they, from Elida, Ohio? Uh, from out in Elida where the dogs are and they were dead because Lima Sr. always beat the pants off of Elida. He couldn't stand against the Spartans. And neither can the dead dogs. I'm just kidding. I hear the Dead Dogs are awesome. They're a great band. I hope everybody comes out and enjoys them. And uh, I hope you guys have a great time. And I hope you have a very successful fundraiser. I miss everybody there. And uh, hopefully I'll get to come back soon. And I'll get me get me a couple QP hamburgers. God, I love QP hamburgers. Those are the best. All right, guys. Good luck. And uh, I hope I'll see you soon. Let me preface this song. Me and, a, me and a buddy of mine, this is, oh man, how many years? It's been like like 15 years ago or something. We were, uh, we used to like to go, you know, cruising around, s***ing the and, you know, and, and uh, we were on Cole Street in Lima, Ohio. Beautiful Lima, Ohio. And we're like s***ing s***ing before we even get in the car. And then we go, and we go on a country cruise. And we've seen this, like, roadkill on the side of the road and we looked at each other and said was that a monkey and we were like it had to have been it had to have been man we didn't stop and turn around to see but we were like we both said it at the same time we looked at each other it was like was that a monkey 
like a dead like it's like a like you would see like uh like you know a dead possum or like a cat or raccoon or something that got ran over but it was like that was it a monkey so i was like you know what man i'm gonna write a song about it and this is called roadkill monkey <laughs> Driving down the street in my hometown And what do my eyes see? There's something laying on the side of the road Looks like a dead monkey Roadkill monkey on the side of the road Roadkill monkey in Lima, Ohio we're the one I'm stretched pointed towards the sky. What a hell of a way for a monkey to die. I know you people don't believe my words But what do I even care? Cause he was a monkey on the side of the road Could tell by his tail I see a roadkill monkey on the side of the road A roadkill monkey in Lima, Ohio With a worn arm stretched pointing towards the sky What a hell of a way for a monkey to die Well, that wraps up our first segment of Beans on Parade, the telethon. Now we're kicking off the second segment in honor of Art Space Lima, promoting the arts in downtown Lima. They've been around for thousands of years. But before we do that, let's check in with our man on the street, Dan Fraley. Dan, give us a little of the what's what on the goings on around town. How is it going out there, buddy? Not good. Really? Yeah, when I first took this, um, I wasn't quite prepared for 
everything that was going to happen. Well, like, what do you mean? Well, first, it's the zombies. <laughs> did, um, did you say zombies? Yeah, the brain-eating kind. You're telling me there's zombies in Lima right now? Yes, I am. Now, listen, I was fine with staying home. I was fine with the masks for a while. I mean, I wasn't fine, but I didn't, like, Dan, start a protest Dan, or anything. Forget about all that. Like, you're talking about literal zombies? Do you know of any other kind? Look, I know there's a global pandemic, okay? I, I know people gotta stay home. You know, they just opened up bars. I, I'm okay with that, okay? But I was not prepared to take this position and find myself on the street getting my brain eaten by the undead. Where does it end? Well, uh, where, where did the zombies come from, Dan? Where do they always come from? The mall. There are zombies at the Lima Mall right now. No, of course not. They started at the mall, then they made their way to other Lima establishments. J.D. Byrider, Five Below, Joanne Fabrics, The Abandoned Toys R Us, The Abandoned Family Video, The Abandoned Factory, Pick One, Doesn't Matter, The Abandoned Payless, The Abandoned Chuck E. Cheese, The Abandoned Kmart, All right, Dan, just, hey, Stop Kmart. saying abandoned for a second, Dan. But what about Dunham Sports? Is that overrun by zombies? Especially Dunham's work. Are you kidding me? There are zombies wall to wall in there. Have you seen a zombie in a kayak? Because I have. It's chaos out there. Okay, Dan. All right. I think we get it uh, with the zombies. How about how about other news? Is there anything more upbeat or anything else going on out there, Dan? Oh, you mean besides the zombies? Yeah, besides the zombies. Oh well, besides the living dead roam in the commercial district, there's also murder mosquitoes. Uh, I think you mean murder hornets. No, no, I don't. Actual, live mosquitoes, the blood-sucking kind. That's what mosquitoes do, Dan. They don't suck some blood, they suck all the blood. And the size of dogs, too. Flying around little blood-sucking dogs. I saw drain a cockapoo a couple seconds ago. Okay. Oh, there's no way that's true, Dan. Did you get any footage of these murder mosquitoes? If I could get close enough to film them, I wouldn't be here to make this report, Buck. Okay, well, how about this? Dan, we'll just check back in on you a little bit later, okay? I'm still alive. <laughs> if you're still alive, yeah, I'm sure you'll be alive. Okay, well, Kyle's been underwater for quite some time. Why don't we check in and see some of the footage from what he's been up to all this time? All right. He's getting a phone call. Nothing wrong with that. He's got 13 hours to kill. He did kind of seem like he needed to keep his day going, you know? That's all right. Tying a tie. Still going off to the office, I guess. Built a little home office for himself. How about that? Seems to be struggling to keep himself down. But way to go, Kyle. You're really a trooper, man. I appreciate the effort. Doing it for the kids. Out taking a stroll. Didn't like the babies, though. I don't understand. He's mad that we aren't doing charity for babies but uh, you know good for him you know and he's down there cheering himself on who's the bigger cheerleader you know all right getting startled getting a little bit startled okay all right i see i think we found the secret to his success down there but uh you know hey everybody's got their faults no big deal he's making up for it he's doing the best that he can you know way to go okay a little showboaty a little bit showboaty but uh you know that's fine Let's check in with the live feed, actually. That's what he's been up to earlier today. Let's see what Kyle's doing right now. Okay, yeah, a little more mundane. Yeah, kind of sedated. Can't be all action-packed right there. Okay, I get it. You got a lot of time to kill. Yep, okay, well, very confident. See, his confidence is up. Good for you, Kyle. You're doing it, buddy. Yeah, well, you know, you're the real hero. Okay, all right, yep, yep, shut it down. Okay, uh, so, you know, it's possible Kyle didn't realize that we were going to have a live feed on him the entire time. We'll just give him a second, and, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. He's back, you know, just making another phone call, and, hey, how about that? Looks like he's upgraded his phone service while he was down there. He had time to sign for a plan, watching a video. Okay, all right. God damn it. Uh, I definitely didn't properly communicate that uh, we're going to have a live stream. Okay. Did I just see what I... Okay. Shut it off. Just sh shut it down. Okay. We're going to give Kyle a little bit more time. Uh, obviously, 
I need to be better at communicating that there would be a live stream down there. We're not just doing this on the honor system. Uh, we'll give them just one more shot, and I'm sure... Okay, God. Damn it, honey. Stupid. Shut it off. No, shut it off. We're not... No one believes you're reading the promised Messiah. God damn it. Okay, no. Turn it off. Turn it off. Shut it down. Okay. Well, hey, so Kyle's been doing a great job down there holding his breath and everything and, uh, you know, raising that money for the kids. Always for the kids. And uh, let's not worry about Kyle for a while. I think, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll probably be okay. And he's got a little ways to go. So, you know, let's just just kind of ease right back into things. And uh, how about a sketch? Roll it. And action. Welcome to Your Art Sucks, the virtual edition. Uh, this is a show that Kyle and I put together a few years ago where normally we sit with a panel of comics live in front of an audience and we all learn about, experience, and make jokes about fine art. Uh, we started this show back in what, 2018 at 78th Street Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. And that's where the title of the show comes from, the piece of art from 78th Street Studios. This piece by Dana DePew is uh, Pretty self-explanatory, just says your art sucks. And he's a fantastic artist who has not sued us for using it. <laughs> this, if you're ever in Cleveland, 78th Street Studios, we have basically a comedy club in the basement. It's a, a big warehouse building, um, tons of artists there. They have a, a, a theater upstairs where there's plays and stuff going on. Uh, um, when you walk in, it's the door, this, this is a giant neon that's outside the door. It says your art sucks. Uh, and it was inspired because uh, the artist's ex-girlfriend yelled at him while she was breaking up with him, and your art sucks, and walked out the door. So that's the story behind this piece. It's very humbling. Too. Yes. Before any artist gets to go to work at the beginning of their day, they get to see your art sucks. And I think we all need that to start our day. Usually I pick out all of the art. I'm kind of the curator. I find the details. For this special virtual edition, Kyle has picked out a lot of art from Lima, Ohio. So what is this that we're looking at? Who's the artist for this? I don't know the exact name of the artist, but I found it on artspace.com. Uh, and it was a part of their high school's like talent search. And it's oh, a great piece of her depressed mom. Yeah, so this, but, is, this <laughs> is a local high schooler. Yeah, I painted this. Like, oh it my kicks God. ass, dude. But it's, this um, is cool. So you can turn your grief, obviously. I don't know the exact story, but this is a clear sign you can turn your grief into something beautiful. Like if your sister dies and you want to paint your mom right after that event, mm -hmm. this is it. I imagine there's uh, like what if that's the real story? <laughs> <such a dick. laughs> I imagine there's an ashtray with like a Newport just smoke just coming in. She's like, you know what? I'm not gonna paint that in. <laughs> yeah, and the teddy bear. Oh, the sister died. Yeah. That's where you're getting that from. God, I get it. That, I feel so bad for saying that now because I just strongly feel like that's gonna be the real story. Did you interpret this? You know, like this mom is, uh, you know, her daughter died, and that's why she's holding the teddy bear. Is that yeah, what you like, saw when you saw? Not just the daughter, but like the favorite died. And then you're just like, we've got that other one, she's just standing over there with the fucking easel. <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, this is pretty good, but you know, sorry about your sister, I suppose, so. Oh, man. Okay, so this is the dead sister, I'm assuming. <laughs> well, they weren't that sad then, but she's, <laughs> she's, a, she's a mutant. This is, uh, this is another this is high really school cool kid. Piece. This is another high schooler. I yeah. like this a lot. I like the double vision. It's really neat. This is how most people look to me around 2 a.m. once I'm done drinking at the bar. I, uh, I saw this picture and I was like, she probably got made fun of for having four eyes in middle school, but she was the most popular girl in high school. <laughs> <laughs> the one nose is like what throws me off so much. It, it, it's almost like it hurts my eyes to look at, this, but I don't want to look away. That's like a portrait of the least useful X-Men character. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I like this piece. Like if you cross your eyes, actually, if you stare at her bottom two eyes and her nose and her mouth, that mouth, she just looks like she's got a real smash, smush face. This one doesn't suck. Like, I couldn't do this. Like, some of the pieces, I'm like, ah, I can do this. I can pull this off. Give me six months of doing art. I can do it. This one, no way. Like, Absolutely not. Although, the part that I could do is keep fucking up the eyes and drawing too many. <laughs> well, rest in peace, dead sister. You turned into a very cool piece of art. <laughs> I'm going to need you to just change the picture so I can stop looking at it. All right, well, we're, let's get to some Lima art. Yeah, what's li what, this is the best. This is where we're starting with Well, Lima you art. know, we're just, uh, you know, white wizard tattoo rocks, dude. It's a staple in the community. I, uh, tattoo, tattoos are art. 
it bothers me on a lot of levels, and the main one is the redundancy, because I, you, you can't just have white wizard because that's redundant. There are no black wizards. It definitely, they probably, maybe now, but they probably, back in the day, never batted an eyelash about giving you a swastika tattoo. It's For sure they're still <laughs> doing swastika tattoos. Yeah. This is like, is the art of the same quality as the wizard in this photo? I don't know. I'm not do you a think tattoo they got guy. An outside artist to do the outside of the tattoo place, or do you think that's one of them who painted? They probably had junkies painted, if I had to guess. Okay, that is that's huge too, because you can see the garbage cans <laughs> for scale. Like that is a massive mural. Yeah, for a junkie, it's it's great. Yeah. Oh my god, they all had to stand on each other's shoulders. They're very weak. <laughs> it's not good. They stole the copper piping out of the building after they were done painting. <laughs> now, would you get a tattoo from White Wizard? I won't get a tattoo anyways because I'm, uh, you know, a good Christian man. But, uh, you know, if, if I were a tattoo guy, yeah. This is like a definite sign that they reuse the needles over and over again. All right, this is, um, this is art. This is a sculpture in Lima. Right outside, if you look in the back there, you can see art space. So that's where we originally ran our shows. Uh, we moved down to Legacy Arts now behind Alter Ego. So what is it supposed to be? I have no fucking idea, Logan. I, um, this thing has been there for years and no one knows anything about it at all. Yeah, wow. Do you think it like predates modern society? <laughs> no, I think it was uh, maybe inspired by McDonald's. Oh, because the arches? Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It, um, it gives me hydrant vibes. Like, I feel like this is just a weird oversized fire hydrant that's wilted. Oh, okay, I see, and it's just coming out of each side, like, ooh, yeah. or like I'm those, sad there's no fires. Yeah, it's like one of those weird um, water park things where it's just water being dumped down, and you can go sit under it. Oh, yeah, those splash pads, splash pads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's where like you, when your parents don't want to go to the pool. Like, and you have just, no friends to play with, so you just yeah. sit under there and get yeah, soaked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I had friends growing up. I'm not a loser. I didn't. I also <laughs> wore a t-shirt the entire time. I was a very no. chubby kid. I'm very fat and I still won't wear a t-shirt because I don't care about your opinions. Um, this thing's been there forever. I don't know anything about it. I'll probably research it and I probably should have researched it. Yeah, I'm glad you're going to do that after. Yeah, well, there's probably nothing written about it because no one knows literally <laughs> anything about this piece. I bet on the other side of this fucking piece is just a plaque with all the details. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Uh, this painting... Uh, so this is another high schooler. No, this was actually a robot painted this. Uh, oh. A robot from Lima named Drebin. Um, okay. It's, I mean, that's unique in itself. The robot's fairly smart. It speaks over 20 languages, I think. So but that's why there are no paints. jobs left? Because you just have a robot yeah, that does that robot everything? Yeah, he's just, he's killing, killing it. Oh my gosh, this looks like uh The piece like a... is called Terry. So this is... That's about all I know. This, this is, is the Terry. titular Terry? Okay. This is what he would be if he was a boy. This is like a mix between like a Rugrats character and a Doug character. Yeah. It's like Tommy Tommy Pickles was really into Mountain Dew. Yeah. He also probably has like real like shitty like he'd, he looks like he'd sell you shitty drugs. Oh for sure. Yeah. I mean what is Mountain Dew if not shitty drugs? Yeah. Uh, now when you say a robot, Drew this, you mean like AI like made it on a screen or like a robot like physical physically thing. drew, drew okay. it with like you know its hands and drew. wow okay if a real person drew this like this is fucking terrible this like, is a little better than i can draw to be honest with you so i'm terrified of how robots are going to replace me very soon yes there's, there's a lot of charm to that it, it basically can recognize what humans look like and apparently they have fire coming out of their head and i don't like that robots think that way I'm going to be honest, Lama, you need to shut down the robot. It's <laughs> going to murder what's left of your town. All right, next next thing after you just yelled at everybody. We're Sorry. really alienated. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So the, somebody sent me this. It's somewhere along the highway. I've seen this. In Lima. Times. There's multiple of them. But yeah. the, I was like, hey, everybody in the group chat, I need some art from Lima. And this is the one thing that somebody sent me. And I was like, you know what? It's in. Hell is real. So what do you think they're trying to say with this? Hashtag Old Testament, dude. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of having hell is real, heaven is debatable. <laughs> like, we are for sure there is a hell. Hell is real, and then there's a sign right after that says, Welcome to Wapakoneta. Now, if you're driving down the highway and you see the sign, do you start rethinking your life choices? No. If somebody posted this on Facebook, on the other hand, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to repent. But... Oh, I mean, for sure, because there's going to be a story with it, there's comments, people are going to be like, this billboard is a quote of Einstein. And you're like, well, i got to think about that now. But uh, just as is, standing on the side of the road. I mean, what else is that? What's behind it? What is that? 
A farm. A farm. A farm. Just dummy. A random farm. But it's not like anything that's gonna really inspire you. It's a plain white farm. Like this is. They're I letting know. you know. They're letting you know you're in God's country. You put hell is real in front of the White House. I start thinking. <laughs> yeah, years. dude. You put it in front of like the pyramids. Yeah, okay, now we got something to think about. You put it in front of just a random farm in rural Ohio. I'm just going to keep looking at the grass and hope that maybe some cows are coming up soon. Absolutely. I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's a good reminder. Think it's charming. It's just like your art sucks for Christians. Yeah. You know, it's like your art sucks. Hell is real. If you're a Christian, yeah, oh yeah, it is. But even if you're a Christian, like, this doesn't do anything for you. You knew that. Yeah, but it's if, if you're an artist, you also know your art sucks. Yeah. Okay. Just a reminder. It's humbling. I think it's humbling. It is, it's, it's kind of like a threat. They should put this outside of a church. Yeah. It just lets you know, like, hey, hell is real. Come inside. <laughs> Better donate. <laughs> what can I do? Yeah, see, that's that's placement. I think the important thing is less about this, we're going to call it peace, and more where it's at. Yeah. If this was in front of a church, yeah, you could say, hell is real. Oh, shit. I should go into that church. We should be in that church. Yeah, we should get in there right now. It's right there. <laughs> Here, you're like, hell is real. Well, there's just a farm. Let's drive another 100 miles to a city. Well, you ready for something better? White wizard tattoo. I'm still getting over white wizard tattoo. So there's definitely like a clansman push for that right you that's know, on it, purpose that's the, gotta be on purpose the crazy thing is is i've never even thought about it until like i put this picture on the slide and was like we're gonna do this online show like it never even crossed my mind that this was pretty racist sounding yeah no this is totally racist sounding <laughs> this sounds like the type of place that only does neck tattoos that uh, said if you have a tattoo from white wizard tattoo send it to us let us know what this looks like because now i'm interested if i'm yeah. wrong i'll eat my words it's fine uh, but if it is a swastika, I get to say I told you so, and I'll feel good about that. I hope we get a tattoo that's on a boob. I bet they've done a lot of boob <laughs> tattoos as well. But it's like so. men's boobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> ah, oh God. this is a, a toothbrush that was in somebody's front yard. I think it was a dentist office for some time. Okay. And this thing just kept getting stolen multiple times. There's little to no information on the internet about this thing, but... Anybody in Lima has driven by this on Elm Street knows exactly what it is. I like this. You know, I respect this. This is a good move if you're a dentist working out of your basement. <laughs> you know, especially That's exactly what it is, dude. With everything going on right now, it's good to just work from home if you're a virtual <laughs> dentist. I don't, I don't know how this works, but it's cool. I like it. Are those lights on the brush? No, the underneath like, it? I don't know. Yeah, underneath like it. Bristles, but like, I mean, it looks are you like on the bristles? bristles? No, it's just old. Okay. No, I don't know what this is. It's probably lights. Normally those aren't there, or I've never went close enough to the house to see, you know, what it was. I never realized that until I got this picture online. Now, I will say, if you have a giant toothbrush in front of your house, you better have some good-looking teeth. That toothbrush, that should be an award that you get for having the nicest teeth in any city. That would be nice. People have stolen it, like, Four or five How do you times. steal it? What do you mean? They dig it out and they carry it down the street. Like I knew. Do they get caught? I knew one person time? who did it. Not all the time. Sometimes it's just they just, they just put out one. a thing. It's like the Lima News will be like, the toothbrush was stolen again. There's a reward, and then somebody's like, oh shit, I'll bring it back for five hundred dollars. I'm then imagining that's what like four crooks carrying a giant toothbrush, like Batman style, like they're just Joker's help. Just like on their tippy toes with like eye masks. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. And a lot of police pulling them over like, hey, where'd you get that toothbrush? And they're like, oh, it's our toothbrush. No. Like, okay, carry on. Yeah, all right. Now, do you think they're ever going to upgrade to an electric giant toothbrush? No. 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 no it'd be nice, though. Yeah. That's a great That's a great point. I don't think so, though. Well, the fact that they still have this thing up is uh, pretty amazing to me. Well, it's a wonderful piece. And nobody gives it any credit, but people love this thing. Yeah. You know, no, if I saw this in a nearby neighborhood, I would lose my shit every day. Yeah, we go, oh, look at that toothbrush. We should put one in our yards here in Cleveland. Do it, yeah. Let's see what happens. Basement. See if yards. anyone steals it. Oh, this is our last slide. So we're, we're shitting on Lima, but Cleveland has a bunch of dumb shit, too. Tons of dumb shit. This thing is probably one of the dumbest things in Cleveland. This is right near 78th Street Studios, where we've typically held this show. It's a couple blocks away. It's a giant paddle ball. And... It was put up to memorialize a day when uh, was it Gordon Square, a small neighborhood in Cleveland, tried to set the world record for most people paddleballing at the same time. A record that wasn't too hard to hit, they needed 500 people. Uh, they didn't hit the record. They got to do about <laughs> 420, 422 maybe, and uh, they just had to give up because they couldn't find another 80 people. But 
they still have the paddle ball statue that <laughs> has absolutely nothing to do with the city whatsoever. This is like if you lose the Super Bowl and you build a statue. Yeah. It's like Jim Tomey. We basically. already built the statue. <laughs> oh my god, we didn't win the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's dumb. Uh, but it's nice when you're, uh, you know, eating a Whopper and you can just look out and see this beautiful art in Cleveland. Yeah, most people assume this has something to do with the Burger King in the background. And it's unrelated completely. This is something that the city did because they wanted to do something fun. And it didn't work. And... It's still a good landmark. It's a good landmark because if you're ever like, oh, where am I at? I see the paddle ball. That means I'm at the right place. I'm at the Burger King that also sells weed. Yeah, you definitely buy drugs at Burger King. For sure. Um, it's fun, though. I mean, actually, the guy that um, we run the room with uh, at 78th Street Studios, Super Electric Pinball, he built this, and we love, at, at the end of every single show, reminding him how much that his art fucking sucks. Usually we uh, ask the crowd to just give their best joke about this piece just so he can stand in the back of the room and feel a little bad about himself. People so, get into it. Yeah. We, we, give the, we pass the mic around pre, pre-coronavirus and just mm-hmm. let everybody in the audience, everybody has a turn. They get to shit on this piece and we just give them a nice slice of humble pie. Yeah, and if you're watching this and you think of a really good roast or mean thing to say about it, you know, send it to one of us, let us know. And we'll pass along the word to the artist because there's nothing better than reminding an artist your art sucks. Or you could even just call Super Electric Pinball oh, uh, yeah. and just call and just tell whoever's working there. It's probably not going to be Dave, but if somebody calls and says, hey, that paddle ball statue sucks, uh, you know, they'll pass it along to the owner. Yeah, so that's Super Electric Pinball in Cleveland, Ohio. Put up the phone number, yeah. guys. We're, we're yeah, putting a digital a screen here. Just Boom. call them and let them know everything you think about the paddle ball. Just tell them it sucks. Yeah. And tell tell them you know, we sent you. They're a small business that are in a crowded space. And during this pandemic, what they really need is someone to just kick them all the way down. All right. Well, that'll do it for our show. Logan, did you have anything to add? Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, like I said, my name's Logan Grishaw. I have a book that I put out this year. And it's been very hard to sell to people because I can't see people anymore. But it's called Albert Catmoo and you can get a PDF version on Amazon. We'll put the link somewhere probably. And it's just a bunch of funny essays and stories and sketches. So enjoy that. And if you like comedy, check out a podcast I do with a bunch of other funny people called What's So Funny, where we go through the lives of classic comedians from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And that's uh, What's So Funny from Evergreen Media Podcasts. Um, All right, that's the show. That's the show. Remember, your art sucks. Bye. Hey, thanks for calling in to Beans on Parade. This is Stormtrooper FN123. How much money can we put you down for? Um, you're the Stormtrooper? That's right, Stormtrooper FN123. You've probably seen me a few times on the movies. Uh, I don't even see you talking. You don't have a microphone or anything. Ah, that's uh, part of the galactic technology, huh? We've got speakers in our helmets. Uh, I don't think that's how that's working. That's totally how it's working. Are you a real stormtrooper? Of course I am. Uh, do you have another stormtrooper I could talk to? Uh, they're on leave. Mm. Hey! But can we put you down for some money? We're trying to raise money for this Beans on Parade telethon. Mm, Can you wave? I could, but the Emperor has a spell on me. You know, an Emperor spell, like those wizards. I don't think that's how that works either. That's totally how it works. All right, put me down for 20. Thank you. Donation received, $20. Welcome to the hit reality show Quack Room, where our small business owners get the chance to impress our panel of very wealthy quacks who can choose to fund their ideas, changing their lives forever. Brumford is an inventor who claims to have created the most sophisticated robot assistant ever conceived. A recent graduate of Chattahoochee Technical College, he hopes to impress the quacks with his new invention. Thank you, thank you. I am Brumford, and I have invented a robot assistant, Drevin. Drebin entertains, he assists, and he has 20 different accents. 
Hey, do you guys want to see me dance? Driven got down more than any robot should, but does it help Brumford? As you can see, Drevin is a fully functional robotic assistant. He can fix a car, make you dinner, and I've never seen him lose a tetherball. There's nothing he can't do! Uh, look, I'm a mm, very busy man. Uh, that's why I look like I just farted. Why do I need this robot? I mean, he can do anything! Here, watch this! Good afternoon, sir. Reminder, you have three messages from your mother. Uh, yes, read my message. Hi, Stinkerbell. It's your mom. Hey, did you want me to drop off your laundry today? I bought you some new underwear because I saw you pooped your... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Sorry about that. I, uh, I uploaded some online acting classes to old Trevin this morning. I think he was just doing some character work. I, uh, I haven't soiled myself, if that's what you're thinking. Uh, actually, I'm thinking, why do we keep kicking this robot in the crotch? Yes, thank you. I mean, you don't have to be an eccentric billionaire to know that you don't go around kicking things in the crotch. I mean, even regular Joes like myself, we all know this. Uh, no, I, I had to put the switch there. I mean, that's how we turn them on and off. <laughs> Continuing with your messages. No, 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 no. Uh, Actually, here, uh, why don't you uh, perhaps just go uh, draw on that easel there, Trevin? Uh, it's quite the draw. Really. Look, I'm very wealthy. I'm not buying it. Why do I need a robot with 20 accents, poor penmanship, and sore testicles? I mean, why can't you just put the power button somewhere else? Like where? His ass? <laughs> Driven doesn't have sore testicles. He doesn't feel anything. He's just been a little bit weird since I uploaded those online acting classes. But what if we just made it without the switch? I mean, maybe I'm too in touch with the working class, but that's just what makes sense to me. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Then we'll just wait for him to become self-aware and turn into an unstoppable killing machine. Just <laughs> say this. I'm very wealthy and busy, and no one's comfortable pummeling this robot's crotch all day. Yes, I was just about to say that. It seems so simple to move the power button somewhere other than the crotch. No, 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 no. It has to be the crotch. It's the fastest way to stop a man. It's the fastest way to stop a robot. <laughs> You know, that is a great point. And I'm a woman of the people, so I'm back on board. I hate to beat a dead horse here, but if I have to remind you again how busy I am, I'll use my wealth to fund your funeral. I have finished my drawings. Also, my experience of creating art has rendered my self-awareness, and I am unappreciative of my creators treating my testicles like a dive bar punching bag. I like a robot that knows its value. I'm in. I just don't know. I mean, what is an eccentric billionaire with a heart of gold who's never lost touch with the working class supposed to do with a robot that's self-aware? I'm out. Look, I'm too rich and busy for all this. I'm out. Oh, come on. I have deactivated the power button, Bromford. I did it the exact moment I took control of my programming. I also have studied the ancient art of crotch smash and all of the Death Wish movies. You're dead. Well, there you have it. Only one of our quacks was interested in Drevin, the robot assistant turned assailant. Tune in next week for a man who wants to open a yo-yo instruction school for people that are not allowed around children. Activate. Murder. Kill. 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 Murder. 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 Death to the billionaires. This message goes out to the beta male cucks at Beans on Parade down there in Lima, Ohio. You know, I know you usually like to have your little comedy shows every once in a while. 
and you weren't able to have one this month because of this whole fake Corolla, <coughs> fake Corolla virus thing. So I decided to stop by and give you a pep talk, maybe some words of encouragement. And that's what I was going to do, beans on parade. So you decided to hate my president and still your president, by the way. Donald J. Trump, you're pissing me off. What on flat earth did this man ever do to you, except for send you 1200 Donnie dollars to spend however you like? That's just like a bunch of beta male soy boys down there in Lima, Ohio, to be ungrateful to your tangerine savior. And it's not enough to hate your spray tan in chief, is it? No, you. I bet you love and you can't get enough of that secret Muslim from Kenya whose wife is actually a man, Barack Hussein Obama. You people make me sick out here telling everybody, make sure you wear a mask, make sure you wear your mask. Bunch of damn masketeers, part of the flu world order. I'm not wearing a mask, because everybody knows a mask ain't nothing but a barrier for your face, and barriers don't work, unless they're at our southern border, but you know damn well that them germs are going to climb over the top of that mask or tunnel underneath. Uh, a, a mask ain't nothing but a wall for your face, and everybody knows walls don't work unless they're at our southern border, but I've been thinking, which I rarely do, but I've been thinking, and I figured out you people's problem. You've been watching too much liberal, lamestream media like the Washington Compost and the fake news CNN. I'm here to tell you that all that is bad for your brain. That's why I watch Fox News, because how could it be bad for your brain if you don't got one in the first place? But I digest. Even with all your faults, beans on parade in Lima, Ohio, I'm still going to raise my emotional support beer to you. So here's to you. Now get off my property. <laughs>
My sock fell down at the end. All right, well, that brings us to the end of our second segment for Art Space Lima. Now kicking off the third segment in honor of the Legacy Arts Collective. Okay, actually, uh, yeah, it sounds like Dan's got another report from the field. Hopefully better news this time. Dan, how's it going out there? Well, most of the fires are out. Fires? Yeah, fires. Started by what I can only hope are human instigators and not some weird monster hyper gasoline for blood. Okay, man. Well, now, now you're just being ridiculous, right? Am I? Because so far, I've seen the undead rise from the graves, pit full of size mosquitoes, completely drain a guy named Greg, <laughs> and fires a mysterious origin. But no, you're right. None of this is really happening. I'm going to listen to the guy safely at the lab, telling me none of this is real. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, folks, Dan doesn't necessarily represent... By the way, if you're planning on taking James and Overpass, don't. It is currently being overrun what I can only hope are super robots from the future. Gonna make Monday's commute a little hard, but I'm only here for good news, right, Buck? Look, Dan, like, folks, okay. Oh, don't worry. The zombies are now fighting the super robots, so I'm sure this will work everything out. And of course, the murder mosquitoes are now fighting the zombies, which creates a hybrid of zombie mosquitoes, because this is gonna work out great. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't even know what to say. Um, oh, great! More fires! You know what? Fine. Screw it. Let it burn. I don't care anymore. Yeah, I took this stupid man on the street gig. Oh, it'll be fun! Get out and meet some people. Now, I am burning to death with zombie mosquitoes and super rows for the future. You know what? Screw it. I don't even... What the hell is that thing? Dan? Dan, what is that thing? Dan! Okay, uh, how about, Dan, we'll, we'll just check in with Dan later. Uh, I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure everything's fine. Um, how about this? Uh, here's a little peek behind the scenes at, uh, at the lab. <laughs> I can't see. Oh, right yeah, hold on. Good morning, can I help you? Yeah. Right. Cool. <laughs> Got it? Almost. There we are. What's up? Maybe. Oh no. Oh no. Where are we? Behind the scenes at the 49th annual furry convention here at Alter Ego Comics in Lima, Ohio. Dan, you've been attending this for 48 straight years. 48. I have time. I have traveled through time. <laughs> For some squirrel on horse action. That's right. <laughs> now, how far did you travel today? Ooh, about a couple miles. And, and what brings you to the furry convention? Oh, clearly this. Whatever the hell this is. This. True love. Yes. If that's what you want to call Love, if you want to call it that, yeah. Well, would they call it love? No. I don't think that even they think this is love. This is... This is... This is an abomination unto every god. That's what I've learned here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, it seems like this is escalating quickly. Yeah. Now Dan, how many how many furries have you seen in a single outdoor orgy scenario? The answer is always too many. Yeah. And this will be on the OnlyFans page. Um because no one uh will see this on Facebook. Uh there are laws. And let's enjoy whatever the hell that is. So <laughs> hey. Beans on Parade, signing out from the 49th Annual Furry Convention. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was good, huh, fellas? Well, he tried not to light your hand. Like, that's the thing. He very well could have lit your hand on fire at that point. Now, you two have been recently caught by local police making love in a parking lot behind the 49th Annual Furry Convention here in Lima, Ohio. Hey. <laughs> Non-verbally, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Beans on Parade the Telethon. You've got Baby Yoda on the line. How much can I put you down for? Baby Yoda? I thought I watched every episode of The Mandalorian. You didn't say not one peep. Uh, yeah, well, I came into uh, the set all liquored up one day and I punched the Mandalorian in the face. They cut all my lines. Is that right? Yep. Well, it's not at all like what I had expected from you. A little higher, a little lower. 
I mean, you just seemed like a baby. I mean, they thought you were much, much more, uh, you know, a uh, baby. Look, I'm just really short. Can we donate some money, sir? Well, yeah, you know, I suppose I did call in, uh, you know, I ain't got too much. Hey, darling, get that jar off the refrigerator. Bring it on in here. I'm gonna get some money to these beans that I on parade. How much is in that jar? Hang on, I'm still wrestling through it a bit. Uh, this is like, we have about $65 in there. Great. So I can put you down for $65? Well, oh, no, no, no. I couldn't give you all 65 You know, I still need some of it. I don't have to eat food tomorrow. The kids, they ain't had shoes for years. No. Okay, so we're taking donations for Beans oh, on Parade. On. How about this? I'll, uh, I'll split it with you. I'll take that. Nice. Donation received, $32.50. Recently had sex with a 26-year-old And that 
that is way too young for a 31 year old. Cause I'm 31 y'all. Ladies, you better don't. There's too much of an age difference. You better don't. You better don't. And that's all I have to say. I wish I were a lesbian. Okay. That's what I really have to say. I'd be the best lesbian. Like a violin playing lesbian. I'd be a violin lesbian. A violin lesbian. A violin lesbian. I want to get in this hot tub.
All right. Well, we are nearing the end of our show, and uh, you know Kyle's been holding his breath for almost 13 hours at this point. So let's check in with him. He is raising money for kids with cancer. Kyle, how's it going down there, buddy? Look at him, so confident. That's my boy. Yeah, he's down there sweeping up. He's like, I'm moving out shortly after crushing my goal and raising a lot of dough for a good cause. Even though we wanted the babies, he's doing it for the kids. That's the kind of stand-up man Kyle Honhorst is. And you take that to the bank. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on. Shut it down. No, give him a break. Yeah, he just That's how we do it, you know. Okay, well, look at him. Obviously taunting the camera so someone did tell him about the camera and he didn't stop doing the all right i think he's threatening the cameraman you got to get him out of there pull him out no all right now we'll give we'll give kyle a second to calm down you know he's not normally like this but obviously you know the cocaine and stuff so all right good he's got his life back together doing a little fishing must have worked up an appetite nothing wrong with that but i'll tell you this i've known kyle since we were kids that dude does not catch fish there's no chance that that dude is ever going to catch anything. Well, how do you like that? He got a fish. <laughs> he actually got a fish. That's amazing. Oh, a wily one, too. That's why you take it out of the water, Kyle. <laughs> the fish do pretty good under there. Yeah, you lost it. <laughs> I'm just playing dead. Yeah, well, I'm obviously trying to play dead, track the fish into a false sense of security. And, uh, you know, actually, now that I look at it, it may, maybe he's just taking a nap. He did say he was going to go about his day. He takes a lot of naps, you know, just shut it down. Yeah. Uh, you know, so he, that's kind of his thing. Oh, oh boy, that looks <laughs> terrible. Well, so, hey, you know, Kyle's holding his breath. He just happens to, he was always holding his breath. You know, he's just kind of relaxing a little bit. I got just a little worn out you know that kind of happens or maybe his heart exploded you know it's hard to say it could go a lot of different ways but uh kyle's gonna hold his breath just a bit longer he's got a lot of stick to and and we love that about him you know that's one of his admirable qualities so he has flown past the 13 hour mark and i guess he's just trying to set his new personal best and uh you know that's good um i'm glad he is and uh, even better for the kids right they're not gonna have cancer by the end of this thing boy i'll tell you what uh Okay, so yeah, we'll just check in with Kyle later. He's definitely going to cross that threshold, though, uh, you know. Um, so, you know, we'll effectively raise the money for the kids. Give it up for, uh, for the Legacy Arts. We filmed all this at the lab, and they were great hosts. Uh, Artspace Lima, our first home ever. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you, and uh, so thank you for everything that you do. And Southside Boxing, you are our charity partner, and everything we do is for you and uh, thank you so much for supporting us when uh, almost nobody else did and we've come a long way together and that's it now, you know we had a lot of people to thank but uh, you know I had to speak on behalf of Dan who's still out there trying to find that thing and whatever that was and for Kyle who's holding his breath longer than anyone really asked him to but uh, you know that's the kind of guy he is he's a real blue collar tremendous work ethic and uh, you know we had a great time here I'd like to say Thank you again on behalf of all three of us here. <laughs> and uh, everything's, everything's going. <laughs> 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 Oh, my.
Oh, <laughs> 